Хорошо. All right. So sustained devotion. And you know, we all live on this earth. And we all have different seasons. I've had a bunch of different season in my life I'm talking about like uh, seasons of my commitment to God there are seasons where I'm so in love with Jesus I I don't ever want to stop praying I don't ever want to stop reading the word of God there are se seasons that I don't ever want to stop listen of the sermons I don't ever want to you know stop you know giving just want to just a season of me just want to give money more than usual seasons of you know long prayer time on my own just just long hours there are those seasons and I had many seasons of, of those but there are also I had many se seasons that I don't want to do anything of these things I don't want to pray at all I don't want to read the word of God I don't want to come to you know prayers or come to church or or, or be devoted or watch ser uh, sermons or you know meet with people that will um, you know inspire me or encourage me or uh, motivate me and I had a bunch of those I probably had those more than those and probably we all had those times because I remember when a lot of people they just encounter Christ for the first time they're they're all committed they 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 start judging other people as as usual that how how can you you know not do this or how can you do uh, do this and then we for some reason and we know the reason I want to and I want to talk about that reason why we lose these kind of devotions for Christ for ministry for 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 being in his presence for loving him for for uh, you know being a giver being a prayer uh, a, a person being a worshiper being an intercessor so this is what I want to, you know, talk to you about from my experience and from the things that I, that I learned and I'm still still uh, learning from from things that I ob observe people. I like to observe, you know, look at people, you know, and look at my life as well. Where do where do I stumble? Where do I fall? Where where what happened with my devotion? What happened with my commitment? Two weeks ago I was so on fire, and now only two weeks la uh, later I don't think about Jesus anymore. And so sustained dev devotion, something that, you know, how can I be sustain, sustained in my devotion? How can the season of loving Him would, 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 would last for all my life, for all of the days of my life? You guys want to hear about this? I believe it's beneficial for all of us. So let's just, you know, uh, make this official, open the Bible in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm excited. I love this, this, this verse, this uh, scripture. Um, verse 2. This is Paul is saying how he's jealous for, for these people. He's saying, for I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. And then verse 3. He's saying, but I feel that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Jesus would be corrupted. Just as Eve has, was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily pour up with every, with every, I'm sorry, you happily pour up with whatever anyone tells you. Even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach. Or a different kind of spirit than the one you receive. Or a different kind of gospel than the one you believe. Powerful scripture. Paul, he's just being so sincere and so honest with, with the people that he was speaking this word to. And he's saying in, a, uh, in verse, verse 3 that, but I, I'm afraid that somehow your pure and undivided devotion... Your 100% commitment to Jesus, your 100% love to Jesus, your 100%, you know, you're giving time, you're giving your energy, you're giving everything that you can at this moment today could be corrupted. Paul as a minister, he saw these people, he saw their lifestyle, he saw something, and, we, and we're going to talk about it, that their devotion was corrupted. 
And he's saying that, that um, some of your pure and devo uh, the devotion um, will be corrupted. It's like right now people are devoted. Right now they're good. They're committed. Every day praying. Every day in the word. Or at, le at least this is what he saw their devotion. Then he said your devotion will be corrupted. It's, 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 a, it's a crazy st uh, statement because of his experience of ministering, because of his experience of his own life, I believe, where, where he could sense and look at his life where his devotion was corrupted. You know, and then he's saying that ju just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent, you know, the devil came to Eve, the snake came, and the snake deceived Eve. And this is where actually our devotion is starting to be corrupt, is in an area of information. In an area of information where things are starting to go down in our life concerning our devotion and commitment to, uh, to Jesus. And the verse 4 is everything explains. I want you to follow me. So verse 4, he's saying, he's, he's actually... Uh, I'm sorry, verse 3, verse 3, but I fear somehow. I want to emphasize on the word somehow. Your pure and undivided devotion will be corrupted. So what is somehow? Somehow is not actually somehow. There is actually something happens. It's not just somehow you were in love with God and then you were in love with God and then somehow you no longer love Him. It's, it's, just, it's not somehow. It's actually there is something happened. Some, there's a process of us going from loving Christ and being committed and loving ministry. And then we have nothing to do with it. And then verse 4, he's saying, what does it mean somehow? It means that you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you. Even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach. Or a different kind of spirit than the one you receive or a different kind of gospel than the one you believe. Paul is giving understanding that what is somehow is when we are open to every information out there. And we accept every information as truth, as good, as, you know, Every book you get and there's good statistics and research and people and, and a person is just trying to trying to con like preach his thought, what he believes. And because it's a book, we just sometimes so my, little mindful and we just take because, oh, it's a book. It has to be true. And Paul is giving understanding. See, he's saying because you accept every information from any person. This is what it means somehow your pure and undivided devotion is being corrupted by the lies of some information, by the lies of some people that want to corrupt you. Church, if God wants to speak to you or speak to me to give me some information that I need, right? You know what, you know what God's going to do? He's going to send a person for the most part. If devil wants to do something, corrupt you in your devotion with Christ. You know what he's going to do? He's going to send a person as well. So it's in the area of who are we spending time? What are we listening? Who's influencing my mind? Who's speaking into my mind? This is actually where it's, 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 a, it's a topic that people can you know, disagree and agree and we can argue with this, with this thing. But I want to I wanna, you know, go from the word of God. So he's just, Paul is saying that somehow your pure devotion to Christ will be corrupted because you're happily put up with everything and everyone they tell you. Not every information is truth. Not even every so-called preacher is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and, and, and we're going to go to how can we recognize where is the truth, where is not the truth. So, so he's saying here, we see here that people that preach different kind of Christ, different kind of spirit, and different kind of uh, gospel. So number, number one, I just want to give you a state, statement, a couple of statements of our faith. What do we believe? So number one, what I'm talking about is the faith, our faith. So we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. People believe that Jesus was a man, a good prophet. We believe that he uh, was born, uh, conceived from the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. And Jesus died and rose again on the third day. There's a lot of people actually don't believe in some of these things. People don't believe that he, he rose again. People believe that he has a, he, that Jesus had a, a twin brother. There's the whole theory about this, that it wasn't actually that, this Jesus that ro rose again. It was actually, he had a twin that, that came on the scene. There's a lot of different, different uh, beliefs about that. Second thing that we believe is that um, the spirit. Because Paul said, you believe every person and every spirit that, that there is out there. So I want to say a couple of thoughts about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit the, is the Trinity of God. One of the three people, uh, Trinity of God, part of Trinity. Got the Father, got the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit is, is uh, our spirit is being born. And Holy Spirit comes to dwell and live within us. It's, it's, it's important for us to understand, important for us to know. Um, Holy Spirit is God. And His calling is to reveal Christ to us. Jesus, I mean Holy Spirit, will always reveal the truth about Christ. He will always emphasize the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's the job, that's the calling of the Holy Spirit. That's why for us it's very important to have communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When we actually read the Word of God, we have to read the Word of God with the Holy Spirit. If, you're not, if, you're not gonna, if we're not going to be aware of the Holy Spirit, we will not get anything. It's just going to be a, 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 a pretty cool information, good stories. And the th third thing that I want to say is the gospel. The gospel that we believe is... The, the gospel is that we receive salvation through the sacrifice of Jesus. This is the gospel that we believe. That we know, we know we're not receiving salvation by obeying the law of Moses. But, or by doing some good things. We being saved by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. By believing in sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That he died for us. For my sins. Amen. We receive salvation by faith and we believe in a righteous lifestyle. Gospel or grace of Jesus Christ is empowering us to live righteous and holy lifestyle. This is what we believe. There is a other side of the preaching of the gospel that, you know, do whatever you want. Grace covers all. This is not what we believe in. We believe that grace of Jesus Christ empowers us. Gives us, give it, gives us energy, gives us ability to live holy lives and righteous lives. This is what we believe. So, and Paul is just actually, he said about all these things to the church that your devotion will be corrupted because you don't understand these things. You don't, you don't know what you believe. You, you're, or you know, you just stop meditating about these things. You're not rooted in these things. You must be rooted, every Christian must be rooted in Christ. In the gospel. In the spirit. A fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen. Okay, next thing. I know this is basic. But this is uh, actually why people lose their devotion. It's because of these basic things that we so often don't even think about. 
when I don't think about the finished work of Jesus Christ, in, if give me a couple of weeks and I'm not going to think about the finished work of Jesus Christ, my devotion is corrupted. My devotion to Jesus, to ministry, to loving Him, to spend time with Him is corrupted. I no longer want to do that. Because it's been some time that I wasn't thinking about this. I wasn't feeding my mind and my life of what He has done for me. If you remember a person that was committed and devoted to Christ, ministering, loving Him, and you look, He's no longer around. Not, I mean, not around in this church, but in the faith. And you study, the reason why is because he forgot these things. He was deceived by the enemy about Christ, about Holy Spirit, and about true gospel. Somehow he was deceived by reading some controversial books, watching some controversial videos that could, could change, could convince him that what he thought believed is wrong. And that's true. So I want the church, I want us to be rooted in who we are. So we, we need to study these three topics in, in, in our lives on a daily basis. They are foundational things for us as Christians. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, let's read in um, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 7 is going to be more interesting right now, okay? Galatians 5, 7. Open your, open. I encourage you to open. It's really cool. Paul is saying, you were running the race so well. Who has held you back from running, from following the truth? You were running so well. What happened? What happened? Who has stopped you from following the truth? Question mark. Not what stopped you, but who. There is always someone that we allow to come into our lives that will influence me and my life. That will stop me following the true gospel. It sincerely isn't God. For he is the one who called you into the freedom. Jesus brought freedom to us. The gospel of freedom. Gospel that will set us free. Someone. Someone is. It's not the person. Friends. Someone is not like a person that he wants to do that. Is the enemy. Is the deceiver. Is the serpent. Who wants to. Who wants to break our devotion. Who wants to break our commitment. Who wants to you know, send, give us some, some controversial thoughts about what you believe. So that you would start meditating not upon the truth. But upon that controversial thought. And you start doubting what is, what is actually said in the scriptures. And that is where the problem of young generation right now. Right now. They might not tell us. But that's where fight. The real fight is in the mind of our lives. Before you make any decisions, there is a battle here, right? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I believe this thing? Should I not believe it? Should I invest the money there or should I invest money here? Everything is in the mind. So it's very important for our kids, for parents, to, to give the, the, the foundational information in their early age about the gospel. So when they hear the Different opinion of the gospel, kids will already say, this is, this is false. Because I already know the truth. But when we don't know the truth, or we kind of know, and someone is giving us a lot of information about some, in, about some truth they, they call truth. And kids being convinced by, you know, statistics or like makes more sense. Do you guys know what I mean? Because I can open a book and read and, and, and the person who will describe his thought and he will be so convincing and so knowledgeable of that area. And you know, and sometimes you can just fall for it so easy. Jesus said in John, um, let's 
Okay, let, let's finish this first. So he's saying, who, you didn't run the race so well. Someone stopped you from running the race. And that, uh, verse 9, this, who, who stopped you from running, from running the good race? Verse 9 actually explained. This false teaching is like a little yeast that spread, spread through the whole bash of dough. Are you guys with me? Someone stopped you from running the race. And then he said, this false teaching. You guys get it? He's just giving an a explanation what's happening in the process. In the process of us following. I mean, uh, falling from the race. Stopping when we stop to run the race. When we stop to believe in supernatural. When we stop to believe in revival. When we start thinking that, you know, prayer of intercession is no, is no needed. Do you know that, that there are pastors and ministers that believe that we no longer need to pray? That Jesus prayed for us. It is. It's so true. There are people that don't believe that we need to pray. There are people that believe that we can, you know, do sin. We can sin, do whatever we want because Jesus already died for all of our sins. There are people that believe that... That we cannot have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We cannot talk to the Holy Spirit. We can talk to God or Jesus, but not to the Holy Spirit. So, so I, never, I never listen of these people. Because they have, you know, they can back up their theology. If I don't believe, and my church doesn't believe in that, even they can be successful and known people, and that's awesome. I just... I will never listen to that information because I choose and my church, we believe in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So it's not smart for me, for me to feed my mind with the information that would contradict in my mind. So then when I hear the word of my pastor about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and then I got that information and then I have a fight in my mind. Should I, what, what should I do with it? This is how I do it. Like I don't listen of those people that that say that we don't need to pray. I listen of those pa a pa a pastors that that's, that emphasize that we must pray as a church. Amen. They encourage me. They inspire me. In any other area of life. In John 10, Jesus says. About the, it says about the flocks. John 10 verse 4, second part of the verse 4, it says that um, Jesus' flocks knows him. Jesus is saying, my flock knows him, knows my voice. He's saying that they will follow me, him, because they know his voice. Verse 5, they won't follow the stranger. They run away from him because they don't know his voice. I want to read you some interesting thought that I, I discovered. really helped me. Check this out. US, US, USA tre Treasury officer who had, who had a job of identifying fake dollar bills. He said, the key to identify false bills is to spend hours and hours of handling the real thing. The key to identify false dollar bills is to spend hours and hours with the real dollar bills. And when someone gives you a false dollar bill, you notice right, right, right away because you only touch, you only have a feeling, you only have a smell, you only have an eye, smell, everything about a real thing. When you hear, when you see the false dollar bill, False, I'm sorry. You will notice right away. It's the same thing with the gospel. It's the same thing with the spirit. It's the same thing with a Jesus that we believe. If you and I would spend hours and hours with the real thing. With the real thing. Studying, reading, meditating, smelling, whatever. 
underlining, repeating, remembering, feeling it. And when you open some book or you open some show, you open some, you know, news or like what media is going to tell you, promoting you some belief system, some thought. Right away in your spirit, in your mind, yeah. in the smell, you will notice it's something wrong. You will sense this information is weird. It sounds good to your mind. There are all facts about it. Everything is there, but you will feel in your spirit. Because you've been, you've been hearing and you've been tuning and you've been, you used to hearing the voice of your master. You've been he, used to hearing his voice, his, you know, breath, his sound, his, you know, thoughts, the way he thinks, the way he cares and everything. And when something slides, something different in our spirit, you might feel. You might even not, not explain what is it. You might even not understand with your mind. But in your spirit, you will feel, no, this is not it. This church is, is not the church that I want to look up to. This community is not the community that I want to be around so that they could influence me. Church, I'm not saying that we're supposed to, you know, just get together in our, this building and only sit here and don't talk to anybody else. I'm not talking about that at all. There are people in our lives that, that uh, God is giving us to influence and minister. Every time I meet, I have these people and I know these people, I already know that I'm there to influence them. What they have is wrong. It's like whatever they're going to try to teach me is like, God is sending me to minister to them because they're on the wrong way. But there are people called my friends, right? They're my friends. They can call me anytime. They can come over to my house almost not knocking. It's like, it's like that kind of thing, you know? Because I value them so close and, 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 and value them as my friends, whatever they say, subconsciously, I accept and I agree. I don't even, like, think about this, but... But his thought, his mind, his whatever he's, try, he's trying to say, it will influence in my life, influence in my mind. So that's where, I, this is what I'm trying to say. It's very important who you allow to your life that can influence you, influence your life and your understanding, your mind, your belief system. And you need to know for yourself. There are people that, that, that I must minister, that I must spend time, and I must spend a lot of time with them so I can minister to, you know, to them. Because we see Jesus, he spent a lot of time with sinners and tax collectors and bad people. He spent a lot of time. He was criticized for doing that because he knew he came to save the world. He didn't just came to hang out with Christians. He hang out with disciples. He hang out with sinners a lot. He would minister to them. But if we are, don't know what we believe, what we stand for, there are people, smart people out there that read a lot more than we are. There are people that read, you know, a couple books a week. Do you know that? There are people that read five books or eight books at the same time. And you want to and you, and, and, and you minister to them not knowing what you believe as a Christian, that's hard. So, 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 so that's why we need to spend hours and hours with the real thing. And devil enemy, he's not going to just say, oh, Jesus is nobody right away to you. Because, I mean, he's, he's been around. He's just going to say, did Jesus say? Did God said, you're going to die? Did God said, it's true in about, it's actually, if you translate this, if you look at the culture, and we're being convinced. I really believe that we as a church, we're a city on a hill, that we're the light of the world. But I'm convinced and know that we must know, that we know, that we know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Amen. Jesus is the only way to heaven. No other ways.
Number two. What time is it? Okay. Number two. So number one is our faith. We must know what we believe. Number two. Community of believers is a must. Community of believers is a must for us to have a devotion. I find myself... In this area of my life where when you lose that devotion, when you lose that commitment, when you lose that faith, when, because you don't feed yourself with the gospel, with, 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 you don't feed yourself with, with the right information that will build you up. Um, you don't even want to meet with Christians. You don't even want to meet with people uh, that, that could, um, you know, encourage you. I don't believe... And that, you know, I am, I'm a Christian, but I'm just, you know, on my own thing. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just on my own. I, I don't need anybody. I don't need church. I don't need community. This is a walking, how do you say it? It's like, walking on the edge thing. I'm a really strong believer of community. I'm a really strong believer that, you know, I have a home church that is my church. I have a pastor that is my pastor. And whatever he tells me, I'm going li to listen to him. If I'm going on, on the right somewhere like way off, I want him to actually come up to me and tell me, what are you doing, bro? Like, I'm a believer that I need to have a, pa a, a pastor. I need to have a home church. Someone ask you, where is your, do you have a church? Uh, yeah, there's a church. Like, do you have a church? Yeah, no, I, yeah, my church is this and it's there, the name of the church, whatever. This is my pastor, his name, he's awesome. This is what I believe. Because, you know, we all in this world and we have our ups and downs, and when you are in your downs, you have a community that will help you. To lift you up when you're down. And if you don't have these people, you must have these people. Jude, Jude um, chapter 1 verse 20. But you dear friends must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. In this way. I'm sorry, and, uh, and wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal salvation. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. In this way, you will keep yourself, you keep yourself protected. You keep yourself safe. You keep yourself secure in God's love. What way? When you... Get together and you build each other up in faith. When you have a community of people that can always pray for you. That can always come up to you and say, hey bro, you're in the wrong way. What happened? What you been reading? Jesus is the only way and the gospel is the only way. You know, we need those sh a sh a shakings once in a while. You know, once in a while, if you don't, if you don't spank a child, he's not going to get it. Sometimes you just need a, sh a shaking. So you need some, a person. So you, sometimes you need, you know, a guy or a girl that will come up to you. Hey, bro, what, what is going on with you? Come on. Amen. Are, is, are you guys with me? I'm a believer of community. And every person must have a community. I look back to my early years. Being in Crosslight, in church, in SBC Youth. And we were just... You know, believing in our church. We're believing in our youth. And everything that we were organizing was, was the best thing out there, out here and out there. You know, we so, we so believed in our youth, in our church, that we like, we even like, we saw like big youth ministries that are doing well. And we're like, this is nothing. Like seriously, the level that we had respect of our youth and our, and our youth group and what we organized and the movement that we were doing, we looked at bigger successful ministry we were, we were like like they don't even pray they, they just have whatever the big show they have a lot of people but they don't have the real stuff you know that we have the real stuff 
No, we pray in tongues for a bunch of hours. You know, and, and I'm so happy that we had those years and, and I still have had those. I believe in my church. I believe in my community. I believe in this thing. Because it's actually when, I in, when I'm in community, I believe in my, in my community. I'm, I'm giving myself all into, the, into my community. I believe in every event that we are organizing. So I'm paying the price. I'm giving money. I believe. I pray. I fast. I do whatever I need to do so that my church and my community would grow. I'm being, I'm being, um, uh, what's the word? Accountable. There's a responsibility that, I, that, that I'm doing. And people are going to ask me for my, if I did that or I didn't did that. So things that will help us, will motivate us is the community. I believe every person, every Christian must have a community. Every Christian must have a home church that he's attending. That he says, this is my church. This is my pastor. So that when you do have that, it's going to be harder for the serpent to seduce you, to, to speak lies to you. Because you're already firm in your thoughts that nothing else will change that. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. Keep yourself safe in devotion of love, Jesus. Of Him loving you and you loving Him. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking to the first row? And then, so, dear friends, you must build each other up in your most holy faith. So, this is our home group. This is our church. This is the reason why we're doing this conference. You think we're doing this because, you know, you know we want to get, you know, more people here or like a show. This is not it at all. The conferences and the meeting and the church and night prayer and home group, it's the same one thing. It's the one thing. To get together and to build each other up in faith. Build each other up. In Christ, in gospel, in Holy Spirit. Because the reason people fall is because they are not sure of the gospel. That's why they fall. You actually fall from your faith. You don't just fall. You fall from faith. You stop believing the, the, the foundational things of Christianity. That's why you fall. Shep, what's the word? Shipwreck in faith. I want, to read, I want to read you really, really interesting scripture that I got many years ago in uh, uh, Je Jeronomy, okay? 13, chapter 13, verse 6. It's, it's an Old Testament concept of what I'm talking about right now. It's really just, I'm not going to make any, any um, statement about about this i just want you to hear what the old testament was, would say about um this thing so verse 6 De deuteronomy chapter 13 suppose someone secretly entice you even your brother your son your daughter your beloved wife or your close friend and say let us go worship other gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known they might uh, suggest that you worship the God of people who live nearby or who come from the end of the earth. But do, do not give in or listen. Have no pity. pity, And do not spear or protect them. You must put them to death. Strike the first blow yourself and then... All the people must join in. Stone the guilty ones to death because they had tried to uh, um, draw you from the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. This is a radical statement. How God in Old Testament committed was saying to people about the people who want to seduce you or suggest to you from your faith. He said, stone them to death. Get rid of these people. You have nothing to do with these people who wants to seduce you. 
So I'm not, ta I'm not talking about average person. I'm talking about the people. The, the Bible is, is saying about the people, people uh, who wants to secretly entice you. There are people, there are books, there are information who wants to entice. And it's not even the people's fault. It's altogether fault of the serpent who wants to deceive you from your faith, from your devotion, your commitment, your love, your, your perseverance to knowing him. Just this scripture is, I, I still you know, read a lot and, and it speaks to me that sometimes you need to be very radical about these things. Who's influencing people, influencing your life. If people don't bring you faith, if people that don't encourage you, if people put you down or bring you uh, sorrow, why, why, why would you hang out with them? They have nothing, they don't bring good to you. And then the number three is what will sustain us in our devotion is praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues is a must. Praying in tongues will actually build you up. Praying in tongues will, will motivate you, will inspire you, will encourage you. Even if you don't want to do anything, just, 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 just start praying in tongues. Just start praying in tongues. The Holy Spirit will find thoughts, will give you thoughts, will give you scripture, will give, will emphasize Christ. When you pray in tongues, Holy Spirit will emphasize Christ. And when you start thinking of Jesus Christ, what he did for you and how he loves you, this will start move you. This is good. When you have no energy, you just mess. You just don't believe in anything. Start praying in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will emphasize a verse that you need to hear. You don't even know that you need to hear that. You know that verse. He's going to give you a verse, a thought about Christ. Because Holy Spirit will only reveal Christ. And in Christ is your freedom, is your joy, is your everything. So he will reveal Christ to you. And then you, you, you'll be like, wow, he's so in love with me. He's for me. He's not against me. Because the devil will always put you down. Christ will always lift you up. Prayer in the Holy Spirit is a must. When we come to night prayer, when you come to church, when you're home, just pray in tongues. Just driving in a car, 10 minutes, just pray in tongues. It's really, really awesome. So I just want to pray over us. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time.